Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service. We're really glad you're here today. We pray God's word you hear today would be a blessing for your life. Today we have the privilege of confirming five young people in our service. We're going to focus on the, on the importance and how we need God to bless us and help us so that not just them, but all of us can stay faithful to him. We have a special service we're following today. Uh, things will be printed in the front for you, or you can follow, of course, in the bulletin. We do have one uh, newer hymn, or one that's not in our hymnal, probably familiar to many of you, but that's on an insert if you'd like to follow the music for that one. But we'll start our service by singing hymn 599. 599. We'll rise. We begin our worship service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the one true God. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Please fill all of us, especially our confirmants, with your Holy Spirit, so that we will remain in and grow in this one true faith. Grant this prayer so that we may honor you in all things and one day be with you and enjoy the glories of heaven. We trust you will hear and answer this prayer because of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. (laughs) 
Our first scripture lesson today is written in the 24th chapter of the book of Joshua. We start with verse 14. Joshua is getting ready to step down as leader of the Israelites, urges them to stay faithful, and then gives them his example that he intends to stay faithful to the Lord. He says, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. So far, our first lesson. Our second lesson is written in the third chapter of Paul's second letter to Timothy. We start with verse 10. We know the Lord works through his holy scriptures to make us wise for salvation, to equip us for serving him. And so being faithful to the scriptures is of paramount importance in our lives, regardless of what we might face or have to go through. He says, You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecutions, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra? The persecutions I endured. Yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evildoers and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So far, our epistle lesson will continue with the singing of the choir.
rise for the gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the 16th chapter of St. Matthew. We start with the 21st verse. Uh, You can't have Christianity without the cross. Jesus had to go to the cross to accomplish our salvation. We have to be willing to bear our crosses if we are going to stay faithful to him. But we know it's worth it. It's worth it to stay faithful because one day we will be with him in glory. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? So far, scripture lessons. Please be seated, and we'll continue with the next hymn.
will rise. Jesus says, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Amen. The words of God we'll consider today are written in the second chapter of Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians. We start with verse 15 where he says, So then, brothers, stand, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and work. This is God's word. Please be seated. In the name of our gracious Lord, who loves us and has saved us, uh, dear Christian friends, our relatives, family members, and especially Jada, Stephanie, Nick, Jasper, and Truman. Today, today you are so blessed. You are so very blessed today. And why? Well, certainly it's a special day in your life because you're being confirmed. You've reached a very important landmark time in your life. It's an important day because today you're going to be making an important promise, probably the most important promise you'll ever make in your life. The promise to stay faithful to your Lord, to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from him and turn away from his word. Incredibly important. The promise you're making... Today, today, you will be going to the Lord's Supper for the first time and be, and be enjoying the blessings that God gives us through that sacrament. And what a blessing that is. Something that you will be able to, you, or to do today. And those are great blessings. But there's something even more important that makes today such a special day in your life. Because today, as actually throughout your life, today you know the truth. You are children of the one true God. And you enjoy the greatest blessings of all today because the one true God loves you and has brought you to saving faith. You know who the true God is, the triune God, the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You know he is the only true God. You know that he loves you. You know that God the Father gets, sent God the Son for you. And you know how much Jesus loves you and what he went through for you, going to the cross to die for you. He suffered the agonies of hell so that you can have the glories of heaven one day. And God the Holy Spirit has brought you to saving faith that you know Jesus is your Savior, that he died for your sins, that he has won eternal life for you. And as you go through this life, you know that as a child of God, God will always be there. He'll be at your side, guiding you, helping you, encouraging you, strengthening you. You know that he will hear your prayers and answer them in the way that is best. You know that you are going to live forever. One day the Lord is going to take you to be with him in glory and bliss and pleasure that will never end. You know these things. You possess these things as your own. They are yours. They're yours today because God loves you and the Holy Spirit has brought you to saving faith. That's why, above all else, that's why you are blessed today. You have saving faith. You have the greatest blessings of all, the blessings of salvation. 
If you know these things, these things are yours today, and it's our prayer that you will always be blessed as you are today. We want to use that thought as our theme as we look at these words of God before us. May you always be blessed as you are today. And for that to happen, there's three things we'd like to encourage you to do. You need to listen to the Lord, you need to look to the Lord, and you need to count on the Lord. Again, today you are blessed in a wonderful way because today you know Jesus is your Savior and you know the blessings of salvation that he is one. Through faith those blessings are your blessings. And it's our prayer that you will always have that faith so that you will always enjoy those blessings every day of your life. And for that to happen, you need to listen to the Lord. Note what Paul says. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you, whether by word of mouth or by letter. The Apostle Paul had taught the Thessalonians in person, and he had written letters to them. He shared God's word with them, and in that word, he pointed them to Jesus as the Savior of the world. He gave them encouragement in Christian living. He told them the things that would happen when Jesus comes again. He told them the things that they need to know more than anything else, and he wants them to hold on to these things. Hold fast. Stand firm. You know what it is? You take a stand on something, and you're not going to budge. You're not going to move. And that's the point. They know the truth. They should never, ever budge from it, not even a little bit. And that's our prayer for you. And we're talking especially to the confirmants, but these are things that all of us can take to heart and apply to our lives. Because by the grace of God, these blessings have been given to us as well. And so to the five of them and, and all of us, we say, Lord, help us to listen to you, to stand firm to be immovable and unbudgeable from the truth that he has told us. Stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we have passed on to you. And we think of those who have passed on these teachings to you, starting with parents, grandparents, who perhaps read Bible stories to you when you were little, said prayers with you, encouraged you in the way that was right, they brought you to be baptized. They were concerned, wanting to make sure that you would know Jesus as your Savior. You think of time you spent in Sunday school. Now the teachers would pass on to you, tell you the truths of God's Word. Some of you spent time in our school, and we had the privilege to tell you the truths of God's Word. For four years, you were in confirmation class where it was the goal to teach you what the Lord says and to encourage you to listen to the Lord, to tell you the things that you need to know more than anything else in life. And we, we spoke of that on the first day of confirmation, that you have many subjects that you have in school, and those are important things. You need to do your best in your subjects at school, but... Education in God's Word is the most important education that there is. And how many times haven't we said it, right? The single most important thing in your life is your relationship with God. And the single most important thing you do in your life is to take care of your relationship with God. And that means listening to your Lord. And so we told you the things that you need to know more than anything else. Who the true God is. Jesus, your Savior, why you need a Savior, the truth about ourselves that we don't like to hear, but the truth the Bible plainly says, that we're sinful, sinful from the instant our life started at conception, that we do sin in our thoughts, words, and in our actions, and that because of our sins, the one true God has every right to be angry at us, to punish us. Because of our sins, we're going to die one day, and when we die, God has every right to condemn us to hell forever. That's the truth. But we didn't stop there, thankfully. We looked at that beautiful word, grace. The one true God loves us. No matter who we are, God loves us even though we have our sins. 
We don't deserve it, and yet he loves us anyway, and in grace he sent his son Jesus. We talked about all that he has done so that all our sins are forgiven. Completely, totally, absolutely paid for. There's not a single thing we need to do to take care of our sins because Jesus has done everything to take care of them for us. We spoke of how the Holy Spirit works through baptism to give us these blessings and how he also works through the Lord's Supper and the miracle that takes place when you go to the Lord's Supper. We spoke of how we can honor the Lord by living our lives for him. We've encouraged you with these words. We've taught you God's truth, and it's our prayer that you will always listen to the Lord. Again, stand firm, hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you. You think of what Paul said. We read about it a little bit earlier. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of. We think there are those who love you, who have done their best to make sure that you would be taught God's word and learn God's word. However, there's the devil who hates you and wants to make sure you are in hell. And he will do everything he can, including using other people to try to lead you away from that word. And he's... We're told he's like a wolf in sheep's clothing. He may come as meek and mild, or he may come in the form of friends who seem to truly care about you, but their goal will be to turn you away from what God says. You'll get out there, and you've probably met some people like that already, who will try to tell you that it doesn't matter what God you believe in, or try to tell you that uh, your sins really aren't that bad. A loving God would never send anyone to hell, so don't worry about it. As long as people do their best and they're sincere, that's all that matters. They'll try to tell you that whatever religion people follow, as long as they're sincere, then it's good for them. And we should never condemn them for it. He'll try to come with other lives that, oh, if you can get away with it, then there's nothing wrong in doing it. Or trying to get you so caught up in enjoying things in this life that you don't have time for your relationship with God. Trying to lead you into, oh, some kind of uh, comfort level that don't worry about that don't worry about god just spend your time enjoying yourself while you can the devil will try to take whatever god says is right and convince you that it's wrong or take what's wrong and try to tell you there's nothing wrong with it and trying to lead you in various sins and we spoke of that whether it's abusing alcohol or mind-altering drugs or ignoring what god says in the sixth commandment or thinking that all you have to do is live for yourself enjoy yourself that's all that matters in life. The temptations are out there, and to, to recognize them, to be able to fight against them, you need to listen to the Lord, to go back to what he says in his word, and remember, this is the truth. Anything that even disagrees with it in the tiniest way is wrong. Stand firm and hold fast to the teachings we passed on to you. It's our prayer with God's help. You will do that. Then you will stay faithful to your Lord, always enjoy the blessings of his salvation, and then you will always be blessed as you are today. It's not so easy. We have a sinful nature inside of us that wants to do what's wrong. There's times when it's hard to fight against feelings that we have, feelings we know are wrong because they're plainly contrary to what God says in the Bible. It's hard sometimes to stand up to people who try to push us to things that are wrong. It's not always easy to listen to people who maybe make fun of us or to lose friends because we're trying to do what's right. It's not easy. And that's why you also need to look to your Lord for the help that he alone can give. Paul says, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. May the Lord encourage your heart. And we trust he will. And again, he gives us encouragement in the Bible. The promises that he gives to us, assuring you that he is with you that he will strengthen you. 
that no matter what we may suffer or lose for his sake, he will more than make up for it. That if we struggle, that if we have hard times, God will see us through and work all things for our good. Part of walking through life and staying faithful is thinking of God's promises, clinging to them, applying them to our lives. And then, of course, the Lord's Supper, right? Something you're going to be receiving for the first time today, as we mentioned earlier. And exciting. You've seen others take the Lord's Supper. You've talked about it today. You will be receiving this sacrament. And it is a very special thing. But sad to say, sometimes the excitement wears off. People grow, and sometimes going to the Lord's Supper suddenly is, isn't as important to them as it was. The newness wears off. And they start to think, it's not such a big deal. And they miss out on the strengthening, the comfort that God gives us time and again through this sacrament. And to make sure that doesn't happen again, look to your Lord and listen to him. Go back and be clear about those two most important teachings, right? And we were talking about that in the last couple of weeks, that you need to always be clear in your mind the truth about your sins, and the forgiveness you have in Jesus. That regularly, you remind yourself, yes, I'm sinful. God should punish me. I should be in hell because of my sins. More than anything else, I need forgiveness for my sins. When you're clear about that always in your mind, then you realize what a blessing it is always to come regularly and receive Jesus' body and blood and to receive that forgiveness all over again in your life, to strengthen you and to make you marvel again at how wonderful God's grace is for you. And as we marvel at God's grace, rejoice in the fact that we're forgiven, it moves us then to want to live for our Lord and honor him. And to do that again, we urge you to look to the Lord, ask for his help to stay faithful to him. We've done our best to teach you God's word, the Ten Commandments. The Lord says, this is what's right. This is what's wrong. This is what he wants you to do. This is what he doesn't want you to do. But we don't always remember everything. So we need to go back and listen to him over and over again. And we keep that thought even when we say our prayers. And we've spoken of that. What a wonderful blessing it is to be able to talk to the one true God and know he listens. And we mentioned that earlier. That God takes our requests into account when he makes decisions on how to rule the world. And so what kinds of things should we pray for? Well, again, one more time. The single most important thing in your life is your relationship with God. So when you think of prayers, pray especially for things that will help you with your relationship with God. Lord, keep me faithful. Don't let me fall away. Don't let me fall into sin. Don't let me follow false teachings. Please, Lord, help me to follow you in my life. Keep me from sin. Please, Lord, keep me faithful. Keep me faithful to the point of death so that one day I will be with you in the glories of heaven. You need to look to the Lord for his help. Listening to his promises, going to the Lord's Supper, going to him in prayer so that, again, you will always stay faithful then you will always have these blessings of salvation, and then you will always be blessed as you are today. Now, everyone is different, and some don't worry as much as others, shall we say. Some are here, and we're thinking, what an exciting day. Oh, I'm so happy for my confirmation day. Although others might think, Kind of scary. I'm making a pretty important promise. And what if, I, what if I can't keep it? What if I can't stay faithful? What if I'm not strong enough? What if I fall into some sin? What if I, I don't take care of my faith? Then what? 
Well, it's not unusual for Christians to wonder and to be afraid sometime about their relationship with God. And again, we point you to your Lord. You need to count on him. Know what Paul says. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Remember, God loves you. The one true God loves you. He cares about you. He wants you to always be his own. He wants you to be blessed in the way that is always best. He wanted you so much, he killed his own son to take care of your sins so that you would belong to him now and forever. And he's given you those wonderful promises. He says, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. He says, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Count on him to keep those promises. Paul says in Philippians that he who began the good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Count on the Lord to be with you. Count on the Lord to help you. Paul uses the word here, good, the words, good hope. Actually, a truly beneficial hope. And the word for hope is not just a maybe. The word there has the idea of certainty. You can be confident of this. You can have this confidence that God will keep his promises and that he will take care of you. You can count on him. And day by day we live for him. Sometimes we struggle. And sometimes we might fall. And when we fall, our consciences might bother us. Sometimes we might feel so awful about what we've done and we might wonder, can God still love me after what I've done? Does God still want me after the sins I've committed? And remember, you can count on your Lord to be true to himself, to be gracious, to be there, to come to you with his word, saying, yes, he still loves you, and yes, Jesus has paid for all sins, even the sins that bother us so much. And that's especially then when it's important to go to the Lord's Supper, where God comes to you and says, here is my son's body. Here is his blood, and here again is the forgiveness that he won for you. It is yours. Be sure you are forgiven. Be sure God still loves you and always will. And with that, then, we have special confidence in what a wonderful blessing that is. And that's what you have today. You have it because you are children of God. The one true God has brought you to saving faith. And through that faith, you have the greatest blessings of all, the blessings of salvation. They are yours personally. You are God's child. You are going to live forever. God will always be with you and love you. That's what you have today. That's why you're so blessed today. And it's our prayer that you will always be blessed as you are today. And we remind you one more time, listen to the Lord, stay faithful to his word, look to the Lord, go to him for the help that you need, and count on him to always be there, to always help, help you. If we can say it one more time, the single most important thing in your life is your relationship with God. And by the grace of God, you are in a right relationship with him. You know Jesus is your Savior. The blessings of salvation are yours. And that's why we rejoice more than any other reason today. And for all of us, no matter who we are, the one true God has made us his children. We have the greatest blessings of all. All of us today are blessed in the most wonderful way because we are Christians, believers in Jesus. And it's our hope and prayer that for you five and for all of us, may God keep us faithful. Help us always to listen to him, to look to him and count on him. So we will be faithful always, so that always we will be blessed as we are today. Amen. You may remain seated. Please remain seated. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
We'll continue with the offering as we gather it. We'll sing the hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. The words will be in the front for us. If you'd like to follow the music, and I know some do, it's on an insert in your bulletin. The hymn goes on to both sides. So it's there for you on the insert. We'll rise and we'll join in the responsive prayer. If you'd like to follow in the bulletin, we're on page 7. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, you have redeemed us with your blood and won for us forgiveness and eternal life. O Holy Spirit, you have awakened us from spiritual death and brought us to know and trust in Jesus as our Savior. Enable us, Lord, to hold on to the salvation we have received from you. Lord, we know that you work through the gospel and word and sacraments to create and strengthen faith and to keep us as your own. This morning, Lord, we have five young people who will speak their confirmation vows before you. 
We ask that you would watch over Truman, Jada, Nicholas, Jasper, and Stephanie. We thank you for bringing them to faith, for instructing them in this faith. Please grant them your richest blessings. We offer two special prayers today, Lord. First of all, for Shelley Gross, who had surgery on both her knees this past week. We thank you, Lord, that the surgery was a success. We ask that you would help her now with the discomfort that comes after surgery. We ask that you would grant her complete healing so that she can walk comfortably and continue to enjoy your blessings in life. Help her to know, Lord, that you are with her and will always take care of her. We also offer a special prayer for Dolores Kumpf, who is facing some serious health issues. We ask, Lord, that you would use your power to grant her healing. Please, Lord, help her to make it through this time of testing. Help her to look to you and to count on you, to keep your promises to be with her and to strengthen her and to work all things for her good. Hear us now, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. We bring these requests before you in the name of our Savior Jesus. We trust that you will hear us for his sake. We also join in praying the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Dearly beloved, Holy baptism is the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Through this sacrament, God receives little children into his covenant and kingdom, working faith in them and making them members of Christ's church and temples of the Holy Spirit. And since the Lord will not allow his faithfulness to fail, but will keep his covenant and mercy, he says to each of his own, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. In order that this purpose of God might be accomplished, and children may grow in grace and Christian knowledge as they advance in years, the Lord gave this command through the Apostle Paul, bring up your children in the training and instruction of the Lord, he also says to the church, as he said to Peter, Feed my lambs. In accordance with Christ's command, then, children are instructed in the Christian faith. When they reach an age of discretion and understand the covenant of grace God made with them in their baptism, they should daily give their hearts to God and observe his ways. In particular, when they are able to examine themselves and also recognize the Lord's body and blood in Holy Communion, they should, in order to grow in grace, receive this sacrament with the Church of God. To encourage such growth in Christian knowledge and faith, the rite of confirmation is maintained in the Lutheran Church. In this rite, the confirmants publicly make profession of the true faith, confirming the covenant God made with them at their baptism. When the Christian congregation is assured that the confirmants have received proper instruction in the Word of God, and are truly prepared to receive the Lord's Supper to their benefit, it will invite them to partake of this sacrament and with the laying on of hands, pray over them for the Holy Spirit of God that they may grow in grace, 
Be steadfast and unmovable in their faith. Be fruitful in every good work. And in the end, receive the crown of life. We now ask the confirmants to rise and to come forward. Dearly beloved, when you were little children, you were received into God's covenant of grace through holy baptism. And now, having learned the meaning of this covenant from your instruction in God's word, you are gathered here before God and this congregation publicly to make confession of your faith in the triune God, to confirm the covenant of grace God made with you at your baptism, and to dedicate yourselves body and soul for time and eternity to your God and Lord. Lift up your hearts with me, therefore, to the God of grace, and cheerfully give answer to what I, as a minister in God's church, shall now ask you. Do you this day, in the presence of God and this Christian congregation, acknowledge that in your baptism, God gave you forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? If so, answer, I do. Do you reject the devil along with all his lies and empty promises? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Father? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God the Son? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, I do. Do you desire to become members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation? If so, answer, I do. Do you hold all 66 books of the Bible to be of the inspired word of God, true and correct in all they teach and say? If so, answer, I do. Do you believe that the teaching of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know it from Luther's small catechism, is faithful and true to the word of God? If so, answer, I do. Do you intend to continue steadfast and faithful to this teaching drawn from the Bible and to endure all things, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Finally, do you intend faithfully to conform all your life to the teachings of the Word of God, to be faithful in the use of the, of the Word and sacrament, and in faith and action remain true to the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as long as you live? If so, I answer, I do, and I ask God to help me. Give now your hand at the Lord's altar as a pledge of your promise. We now ask you to kneel and receive his blessing. Jada Ann Junt, may God the Father who created you in a wonderful and fearful way, may God the Son who redeemed you with his precious blood, may God the Holy Spirit who sanctified you, guide you through your life, give you strength and comfort in all trials, fill you with his joy, use you in his service, and keep you faithful unto life everlasting. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Stephanie Ann Van Veen. May the Father in heaven for Jesus' sake grant you his blessing. May he renew and increase in you the gift of the Holy Spirit so that you may be strengthened in your faith, grow in grace, be equipped to serve, be patient in all tests and trials, be joyful always, be fervent in prayer, and remain faithful always. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord, is the rock eternal. Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. 
Nicholas Todd Krokel. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. May he guide you through life, strengthen you in all tests and trials. May he use you in his service, and may he preserve you as his own forever. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Jasper Owen Lean. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of confident faith and joyful service, of sanctification and the fear of God. May he strengthen you at all times. May he preserve you as his own forever. Let us draw near to God. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Hebrews 10, 22 and 23. Truman Broderick Alam. May God, who has begun the good work in you, continue to work in your heart through his Holy Spirit, so that you may grow in faith and wisdom, endure hardship, be fervent in prayer, be faithful in using his word and sacrament, honor him with your life, and remain faithful to him forever. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Since it is God alone who works both to will and to act according to his good purpose, it is fitting for us to call upon him for these young members of this Christian congregation that he would bless them and carry on to completion the work which he has begun in them. Therefore, let us rise and pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing your children to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, and leading them to believe and confess his saving name. Enable them to bring forth the fruits of faith and to continue steadfast and victorious until the day comes when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Your church now invites you to receive the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, where you receive Jesus' body and blood and forgiveness for your sins. Accept this invitation with deep reverence and holy joy. Regard your communing at the Lord's table as a precious privilege given to you by God through his church. Receive this sacrament thankfully and regularly. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you always. You may be seated. We'll continue with the singing of the next hymn.
will rise. Dear friends in Christ, it is your desire to receive the sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the full assurance of the forgiveness of your sins, the strengthening of your faith in him as your Savior, and the grace to serve him with a God-pleasing life. As we prepare to receive this sacrament, it is fitting that we confess our sins to God. O Lord our God, we confess that we deserve your curse and eternal punishment for we have sinned in our thoughts, words, and deeds. We can do nothing to save ourselves from the condemnation we deserve. We beg you to forgive us for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus, who shed his blood on the cross for all. Take heart, you who sorrow over sin. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Do you believe this? Yes, I believe. Be at peace. The Lord Jesus has died for you. Your sins are forgiven no matter what they might be. Through faith in Jesus, you are God's dear child. Through faith in Jesus, eternal life is yours as a free gift. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated. We have several announcements before we continue with the Lord's Supper. First of all, we practice close communion, as is noted in the bulletin. We ask that only those who are members of our congregation or another Wisconsin Synod congregation or ELS congregation, congregations in fellowship with us to come forward. By doing this, we don't mean to pass judgment on anyone's faith but we know that while the Lord's Supper offers wonderful blessings, it can also cause great harm. So we always seek to study the scriptures with people before we invite them to receive the sacrament. We'd like to invite, first of all, well, first of all, we'll invite the confirmants, and we'll mention that in a second. But after that, those who would like to see, receive the individual cup. After that, those who would like to receive the common cup. During the distribution, we'll sing the posted hymns. It's our custom that we invite the confirmants to come first, and we invite uh, selected family members to come with them. We'd like to invite, first of all, uh, Truman and those of his family who will be joining him, and Stephanie and those in her family who will be joining her. And then Jasper, Nick, and Jada would come at the second table with their family members. Come now to the table of the Lord. <coughs>
will rise. And we will pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of gathering today with our fellow Christians to hear your word and receive your sacrament. Please send the Holy Spirit to work through these blessed means of grace to strengthen our faith and to keep all of us faithful to you. Watch over all of us, especially our confirmants, and keep us faithful so that one day we may all be with you in the blessed joys of heaven. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Jesus says, if you hold to my teaching, Jesus also says, be faithful even to the point of death. Brothers and sisters, may God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God of free and faithful grace, keep us faithful to him and to all of his word. May the Lord grant it for Jesus' sake. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let's stay standing for the final two hymn verses. Please be seated, everyone. <clears throat> Good morning once again. Thank you for being with us today. We're really glad you're here. Special welcome to those of our visitors here with us today. We pray God's heard, word you heard would be a blessing for your life. Please sign our guest book, and if you'd like, we'll give you a visitor packet that'll give you more information about our church. We'll highlight just a couple of things very quickly. Our Sunday school this morning, for the last time, no adult Bible class. After the service, the confirmants will be lined up outside. You can give them your congratulations. And then we'll come back into church for pictures. If we could get one of the ushers or someone else to move the baptismal font and that railing, and then they could be assembled here for taking pictures. If we could do that, that'd be great. Going through the week, DOE in council, and uh, women's Bible study in the midweek Bible study, and Thursday, Trinity Women. A week from today, we'll have graduation for our Trinity Lutheran School, and following that, we'll have a brunch and a program. There's more information about that uh, in the bulletin. Uh, maybe just one final note about the softball sign-up, and then, of course, there's catechism camp. And again, we have the decals for the new license plates, if you'd like. Finally, that's what I was thinking of, BBS. We're planning to hold it from May 31st to June 2nd. Uh, we need volunteers if we, if we want to do this. So if you're willing to help, please, uh, there's a
please talk to either me or Kelly, or there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin table. Those are the announcements. And we'll just, again, give our congratulations to our confirmants and ask that God bless you and keep you faithful forever. We'll ask you to rise. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Oops. Thank <laughs> you.